Hello and welcome to another episode of Indie Apocalypse Radio back in the night time where it used to live and now it lives occasionally once again because we, you know, it it doesn't work in the sense that the, the world is big and not everyone in the entire world can be, uh, there's no, you can't break up a 24 hour clock in a way that works for everybody. It's simply impractical because... It's a big world, and so this is our, 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 you know, our Oceania time, basically. We would break in and we'd be like, "Hey, what's, what's going on in uh, that, uh, that East Asia, Oceania neck of the woods?" And what's going on? Oh, Frey, what is an apocalypse? Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a monthly anthology of games. I'm the host, Andrew. I you know, put it together, I make the whole thing, and then I also invite the guests on the show and I talk to them about, you know, games, uh, other stuff, food, just, like, local flavor, because I'm, you know, it's, uh, talking about the process is all well and good, but also, you gotta talk about the person behind it, gotta recognize, hey, what are the people who make the games? And you learn a lot about the process through that. But speaking of uh, the people who make the games, we've got a person who made a game for Indie Apocalypse 37. Yes, a person who made a game for Indie Apocalypse. A thing I recommend you do not do unless I give you money to do so. Um, uh, it is Nata with uh, for issue 37 Shrine Rally. Hello, how are you doing today? Hey, hello. Hello from the future. <laughs> yes, hello. <laughs> Hello from April 2nd. There are no fools in your territory. Yeah. Uh, um, hello. Uh, my, my name is Nata. Uh, I usually go by Nata Tulipa on my more social media. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to go with the whole thing or uh, partial thing, partial name. But hello. Welcome to the show. I, Thank uh, you. Um, first question, the important question to get out. You know what? I'm going to... I told myself I wasn't going to do this, that I was going to try and do this every week now, um, and that is starting a timer, <laughs> so that I that I don't under I don't undercut uh, twenty, and don't go too far over as well either. So I have uh, Natha, I have a very important question at the top of this segment here, which is, how did you hear about Indie Apocalypse? Oh, um, I, I think the first time that I heard about it is from like a friend from BC community. Like I remember that someone shared on Twitter, and then I kind of follow your Twitter. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it was also a while ago at this point as well, because I think if I remember correctly, I remember seeing uh, you posting about when um. Uh, oh god, I'm gonna forget their name now. The artist who did that very cool, like, uh, spooky in the woods cover with a hand coming out. Uh, you know, I used to be very good at remembering everybody's name of everybody involved, but there are a lot of people now. Oh, that, that really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe, um, the, the cover that yeah, um, was done by a Thai artist. Yes, uh, Yeah, I, I think so. I think, I, I'm trying, I don't know where I break apart the syllables there, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was like, then I, it, it puts me in the back of my brain, like, you know, a lot of developers, uh, oh, they've made a game since then, um, but, oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> the game is gone <laughs> but uh, uh, there is yeah there is a lot of uh, artists from around the world and turns out you can usually get by enough um, even machine translates will probably get people if you put dollar signs and numbers next to it I think you can get machine translate to get you far enough but um 
import so Shrine Rally, the, the the game for Indie Apocalypse thirty seven, tell me a little bit about or to what is Shrine Rally? Mm -hmm. So, um, Shrine is, um, the idea that I had for, for my, one of my, um, old game jam submission that I did not submit it. <laughs> okay, so, uh, it, it basically was about, um, a community that tried to, uh, fight with the, uh, what, what, that, what is that word again? <laughs> uh, fight with the, um, the takeover of like yeah. the bigger business. Um yeah. so the gentrification. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um it it is like a, a game that I I made because um well I want to say that I was inspired but um I, I'm not sure if inspired is the right word because like you know like sometimes when you hear about like a bad new about something and you have this intense feeling that you want to turn it into like some kind of art yeah yeah so basically shyly is about that but um well i would say inspired okay so it is inspired by um an incident that happened in my in my university campus so uh well you know like sometimes like your university can own some land around it like on the land of the campus and um after some time they, they want to turn that land into like um a business area or like a shopping area so they try to push the local out mm -hmm. so yeah that, that thing also happened in my university campus and they try to like kick people kick all people out and build the mall on top of it and there is this one shrine that is like that has been there for almost like <laughs> a century, and yeah, they they have been they have has been there for like a very long time. Yeah. But since like most of the people that used to go to the shrine has already been kicked out, um, nobody go there that much anymore, and they they have to like try to save the try itself and then yeah like um not not only some people from like that area but also like the university student also like give the hand to help with the shrine and yeah so that inspired me to make the game but i i'm i am not saying that it's like one-on-one -on -one yeah, no, <laughs> um <art> adaptation is, <laughs> uh you know uh, it, it takes it from ideas that you had or feelings that you had and and you know interprets them into art not it's usually not a direct uh, story that is exactly from your life yeah <laughs> it's usually, yeah sure. life is also big and it's harder to fit the whole thing in a game that's true and when you when you abstract a story it's easier to like you don't have to worry about uh accuracy the your own accuracy that's in your head you can um tell like a more the idea of the story if you're like well technically this didn't happen or this happened this way yeah so it is more like what if of the story <laughs> right right and it, it, it can work in a way you can adjust things so that the story can sometimes work you know better as a story or better if to convey an idea to other people and make it more not universal but more um i don't know how, <laughs> what the word is i'm looking for it's a bro not a uh, you know uh more yeah i guess not exactly universal but more Maybe universal is the word I'm looking for, but it's it, it's too all encompassing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. It's more like a uh, relatable. That's the word. That's how I want to say relatable. <laughs> uh, um, talking about being relatable, I I also notice when I when I give my game to my friend to like 
play test it before submitting it to you. Yeah. Um, like, I know that um, that like for for the mo for that moment that I give it out to my friend, I know that um, <laughs> uh, that that the game will not be relatable for everybody. No, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that's that's the it's the it's the tricky thing because you want other people to. But also, you know, uh, something that can be deeply personal that doesn't feel relatable can feel relatable. I think I like I like art that, uh, and I think the art that has more that stays around longer tends to be like deeply re deeply relatable, but with fewer people instead of <laughs> something that like everyone kind of understand like a lot of people sort of understand or relate to yeah i i know that um one of the game that most of my friends like um is the the game called i don't know how to i don't know how to have pot pot alone <laughs> yeah which is um one of the first games that i published on each year and like i, I know that um what they say about it is that they kind of relate to it a lot <laughs> and and i see the difference between like um the comment of like people from asia country and like from like western country yes. like i have noticed that um most of my asian friends usually say something like okay i, I just finished this and i like cry a lot <laughs> because of it why like most of my friends from like western country usually say oh oh hey they, this game is really lovely really nice and i, and I was like that, that is like the, the two end of the spring thumb right right as someone who you know hot pot is not a family uh affair it's, it's not like a you know i don't even know how many restaurants there are around me that i would go have hot pot at you know yeah and maybe because um that game also talk about like parent expectation yeah like uh, yeah like um i know that okay in western country like sometimes parents also like put this kind of like very high expectation to their children like you have oh you have to get a good grade you have to like go to this um famous college you have to like get um a duty to be like a doctor or a lawyer yeah and but um from what I heard, is this like something that is very, very common among Asian countries. <laughs> so maybe that is also why the comment is very, right, right, like right. very different. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like that that kind of pressure, you know, at least from my limited experience in the U.S., that kind of pressure is just as common as the, uh, you know, the the intense pressure from a parent on a kid is just as common as having a latch, being a latchkey kid, or like a, uh, which is say, a kid whose parents are working all day and comes home and takes care of themselves and has no necessary, like a lot of, uh, very they're very independent, from, a young age and there isn't necessarily the same pressure because there's also no one to there's no one. <laughs> Uh, always there to exert the pressure, but you can always mix those things. Oh, my mic is a, mm -hmm. is a bit low. I don't know. Let me... Oh, I, I can hear you just fine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's just that it's going out a bit low. I'll just, I, I'll just turn it up on OBS. So, but I could be talking quieter. Who knows? Oh, it is a bit. Let me, how do I... Let me just crank that all the way up and see what happens. Hello, there we go. Okay, let's just... Can I get into the red? Can I get into the... Maybe not, who knows? Anyway, anyway, that's uh, less important at the time. But... Um, so, 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 so... Um, what was I... I lost... No, I lost my... Uh, we were talking yeah. about... Yes, uh, <laughs> food, right, food, games, uh, you know, different experiences. I mean, that's that's why I like, uh, you know, reaching people of all these different, you know, around the world, because everyone ha is going to bring, like, a different experience to things. It's not like a, there isn't any kind of 
there's no universal experiences globally, never mind within the same country. So I think it's real important to, you know, bring a bunch of different people around and provide a bunch of different experiences. So if I don't know what hot pot is, if I, well, if I have a conceptual understanding, but it's like, this is, you know, like a, a global games project. I f fill in my gaps of knowledge with other people's experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so basically hot pot is like uh, a meal that you make together and eat it together. Yeah. <laughs> so like um, if you have this broth and you just order the ingredient that you like. So you can say that um, every house has their own hot pot combination like unless you you know that combination it will not be the same right right <laughs> there's yeah that's uh i feel like it does it, it, that exists in different ways or like around here uh you know there is a different kind of different you know meal expectations of like going to a friend's house and seeing like like because i think those are some of the universal experiences are you know even in different countries like there's like oh what is a what is you know a meal experience uh that changes from like house to house never mind country to country and there's like a like hey, hey have do you have that ex have you i don't have an answer for this myself but i i want to know natalia do you have have you ever been to someone's house and you just had a very strange like uh this is how they eat dinner or this is how they eat a meal or oh yeah yeah i i remember that i went to um a house my friend house and like i was so surprised that they did not have kongi as breakfast <laughs> like conky like boy boy rice <laughs> yeah. because like that that is the only thing that my house has as a breakfast <laughs> and i was like wait, wait, what like you don't eat conky as a breakfast like you just eat some rice you you also eat spicy food <laughs> like <laughs> and, right right yeah <laughs> but it, it is also because we we came from like different background like yeah. um i am like a thai chinese <laughs> Thai Chinese guy and that person is like um Thai Muslim. <laughs> yeah, no, I remembering now that like as as I was uh, getting ready for this thing that I I was like I forgot that for the longest time or like I knew this but it, there was this memory like all oh, right like my neighbor for roughly, you know, who god how knows how many years, 15 years was also uh, a Thai and I was like, "Oh, right. This is like because I wanted to ask you about a soup that I don't know what it was as a child. Um, and I uh, there was like, okay. it was, it was very strong smelling and it was hot. <laughs> um, um, okay. <laughs> um, but, but you know that most Thai soup is hot, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, most soup, most soup is hot. <laughs> Same way in America too. I don't know. They call I, as a child, as, as American children, uh, uh, we knew it. It was it was called hot and stinky soup, but we didn't know what that meant. <laughs> but um, hot and stinky. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, but I don't know. What, I don't remember what the scent of it was. It was clearly like you know, this is non-American cooking and not uh, American spices, um, and it was like a a weird uh, sense memory that it's hard to describe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Thailand is like. Um, a very fusion country like right. yeah we we have like native people we also have like some influence from like western and also like some other influence from like other sea country <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah it's like, like sorry oh uh, don't, don't worry um so so like tom yam gung right you, like i know like most people usually like learn about tom yam gung as their <laughs> first Thai dish to try yeah. and Tom Yam Gung is very very like um like the combination between like different 
cultures because uh, our I know that our classic tom yum gung doesn't have milk or like coconut milk in it, and it is until like um, people bring it to America and add milk or like coconut milk into it that yeah. it turn into like that version. <laughs> Yeah, and even even the version that has coconut milk also like, uh, it is influenced by like Indonesian food or like Philippines Philippines food. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not like chili Thai. Right, that is that's that's something I think a lot about as in I guess like a country that is feels like all fusion foods for the most part. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. Uh, American food is, but also it's because it's like a, it's a baby country. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, I, yeah. I wonder if Tom Yum Goon was what it was, because I think it was also sour. In a sense, yeah, it a is hot, sour, sour soup. Which in my, yep. Which in my sense memory, I'm like this is probably it, probably what it was. I don't know. And especially if it was like a staple dish because I remember they had it a lot. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> I, I, I would not say that it is like a staple dish. No, no, okay, maybe not then. <laughs> or, or, or like it's a uh, a, a presumed staple in, in America kind of thing, right? Or like that, <laughs> those sorts of things. I like. I'm curious. See, that's the thing. That's that's the secret of this show. Is I actually love just talking about. What kind of what kind of food people eat? You know, what kind of like the real minutia of things. <laughs> oh, but um, I I know that like sometimes people kind of throw shit on like food that was made in other country. Like so, basically, if you like made um like American Thai food and yeah. <laughs> Thai people will like, no, this is not the real Thai food, and I I feel like, dude, you you have to know that it is very really hard to get your hand on like the real ingredient over there yes. like oh. there's so many things that you cannot get over there <laughs> i i remember it was like a while it was like i'm gonna make all sorts of international dishes like not even not complicated ones just like you know standard dishes from around the world and it was like <laughs> very quickly became very difficult yeah. just to get a lot of like basic what you would think of as basic ingredients true true that's true um like some tam, which is like uh, a spicy salad of um, an unripe papaya. Yeah. And yeah, I, I noticed that that is one of the things that most people who move to Europe cannot make because it is very hard to find <laughs> uh, unripe papayas over there. And they have to like try their best to like find an alternative, <laughs> which is sometimes they, they use daikon instead, like turnips. That okay. kind of plan, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, like I, I think about that a lot. Like, it is like you should not say like something is not authentic because <laughs> because it it doesn't use the same ingredient that you use. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of ingredients around, and there's a lot of like stuff takes time to travel, and people don't like, and you're also very beholden to. Uh, true. True. To like what what sometimes like just like what the region is you live in, and in terms of like what your grocery store stocks. That's true. Oh, like, um, and I I have heard about that. Like it is also applied to like the <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that um I already told you that I am Chinese Thai and yeah. Uh, so I am like the third generation of my country since my like grandfather moved to move from China to Thailand, and I think about that a lot. Like, but, like even though they still practice some traditional stuff, like some Chinese traditional festival or like holiday, I I ask myself like, um. Sometimes that if this is the version that this is like authentic. <laughs> yeah, right. There's... Yeah, because yeah. like um, I know that they they left the country before the cultural removal, removing happened, and like so like some of the traditional stuff that they used to have that it is not there anymore, 
and right. uh, so if um if i want to see like hey uh, i i want to know like if you do this in like in china i cannot really really find the the present source about it because like like it is already something that they might do in the past but not not anymore <laughs> right and yeah it it's, is... it's the, the the tricky thing of like you know immigration and yeah yeah like when, when you want to go back to like the origin and you like want to see if how they do it how they do this stuff at like over there and that is not that thing anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It turns out the world uh, changes a lot that's true <laughs> Uh, uh, but I have a question for you uh, as we are approaching the end of our time here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Mochi wants to know uh, in, if you're if you're now for those familiar with the show know what's coming. But let's see if you are prepared to. I gotta know. Uh, do you have a favorite Toho character? Oh, uh, <laughs> I um I. I don't think so. Like the only thing that I know about <laughs> Toho is by absorbing it from my friend. <laughs> Do you have a uh, 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 a favorite looking character? Can you that you can describe? Um, I know that she has this white bonnet, I guess, and she has like short hairs and with like icy wing. Okay. Yes, I've... and she's probably dressed in like a made outfit, the the blue one. Yes, the blue one. I think that is Cerno, if I remember correctly. If my my gathering Toho knowledge is to be believed, <laughs> are you looking it up? I'm I'm making sure that I know. I'm not. I'm not. An, I'm becoming more of an expert week to week. But that sounds right to me because that's the one with ice wings. That's the ice one. Yeah, but I think that uh, she's the only character I know because because <laughs> she's the only character that my friends talk about. <laughs> well, perfect. So that is by default the winner. <laughs> that is, but do not worry. There are plenty of people who are like, I don't know what you're talking about, or 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 once because I don't put enough like uh, accent on the the use in it. Uh, I think I need to. You know, technically speaking, I need to accent it a couple more time, a bit more. But it's almost like I, I was talking about Toho, the uh, other production company that put out Godzilla and that sort of thing, that the film company. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but no, that is, we were talking about Toho. I, I still listen. I, I don't know how to do that. I don't. The the bullet hell game. <laughs> yes, the bullet hell game. Uh. But speaking of, uh, nope, not speaking of bullet hell. <laughs> That's no way to transition <laughs> this statement. Natasha, thank you for being on the show. I hope you can stick around for later, but uh, we are going to head to our break, our first break. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. No, thank you so much for, you know, making games, making the game, in, you know, making Shrine Alley, making all the stuff. It's... Uh, we got this some of this in the pre-show that you don't get to hear, but I'm just talking about I love. I do this because I love art, you know, and I love to help. <laughs> I want to see people make all sorts of stuff, and I hope other people see it as well. But uh, in, in the meantime, we're going to go to break, and we'll be back in like uh, two minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Welcome back to Indiepocalypse Radio. Uh, that was Liz Scott with Big Shot. Uh, we are here with our next guest, who you may know from Indiepocalypse issue 38, as it enjoyed its final weekend of being the baby of Indiepocalypse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With uh, Fliff, it is uh, Girl Software, also known as Princess and Jessica. Hello, how are you doing today? Hi. Right. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Um, I'm going over a sore throat, so my voice is a little silly, but that's fine. That's, that is. So who? Sorry, who is that with the sore throat? 
Uh, that's me, princess. Princess with so a sore throat. throat. There's your voice. Sore throat. That's me. There's your throat. your vocal signifier. Perfect. Uh, uh, so I, get, I have to know uh, the question at the top that you've had time to prepare for, which is, um, how did you hear about? Did we? Did you? No, that's actually. Let's step back and reverse it because you're a a, a a commission game, and I didn't know the answer to this question. Did you know what Indie Apocalypse was before I emailed you? I don't remember. Um, well, I knew, uh, but I had learned only recently. I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd probably heard of it in passing on Twitter or something, but. Um, the first time I became really aware of Indie Apocalypse was when I was name searching on YouTube, <laughs> uh, and I found a video with Bomb Dolls featured in it, and I was like, "Oh, there's our game. What's Indie Apocalypse? That seems cool." Oh, right. That was the. Um, that's. I think that's how I how I you kind of or like how you more recently got rattled around in my brain, which is the. Um, uh, I I did a sicko showcase like about a year ago. Yeah. Where it's like I got rejected by a showcase, and I was like, "I'll make my own showcase." Then, I'll oh, that's you. what that was. <laughs> it's my, it's how I do things. Where I generally will be like, uh, "If I get rejected by something, I'll just do it myself." That's it's great. Twenty twenty five Indie Apocalypse Con. <laughs> After <laughs> Indie Apocalypse Fest, too many rejections, and I'm just like, oh, I'm done with this. Well, that's well, good. You, so, no, uh, actually, yeah, I think you, you, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I think you knew about Indie Apocalypse. I did, day, right? I did, I did, I did. I had seen it uh, a while back. I don't remember how long ago, because time <laughs> is an illusion. And... Right, and it's been going now for, you know, uh, 39 months. Yeah. So it's like, I'd seen it a while ago on Twitter, but it's like I bounced around Twitter so much I had forgotten about it until Tiff was like, oh, we got this email from this thing and i was like oh i know what that is <laughs> and it was cute well, that's good. that was really oh, no, i'm doing that i'm sorry i am figuring out how to i always forget there it is i always forget how to get rid of spam messages but i figured it out nice. <laughs> you ban them uh but yeah that's uh that's always heartening to hear. It's, it's also becoming more difficult to be. It's it's good to be uh, less unknown, you know? Yeah. There was that thing today about, uh, like, the thing from Twitter leaked about how, like, if you, oh, yeah. if you like, block oh, yes. or move, report <laughs> yeah, people, like, the you, analytics, like, like, the algorithm does Twitter favor you. Yeah, the algorithm, like, oh, people were yeah. analyzing that. Yeah, they were, or they open sourced it. It's not even a leak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh no, you get, they don't like you making up words and doing outside links. I'm like, that's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I do buries my Twitter algorithm. So it Great. makes me happy that all my engagement is organic. Yeah, yeah now we know it was rigged against <laughs> us the whole time. Yeah, well, now uh, well, I'm glad to know that it doesn't, as far as I can tell, it doesn't get rid of things like uh, Patreon and Boost. And so all those maddening misspellings that I saw constantly was all for <laughs> naught because I hated seeing those. They look, they just look stupid. <laughs> it looked like you were uh, performing some kind of incantation to some <laughs> algorithm gods. And if I'm being honest, uh, having recently dove it into the For You tab since uh, the app forced it on me, I I do not want the engagement of anyone who uses that thing. True, yeah. true perverts yeah. use that. <laughs> I don't know how, how anyone can use that, that, that tab and survive. I've never liked Twitter and it's just getting worse and it's fun. Yeah. It's yeah. fun to care less about it because it's so bad now. Yeah. That's like the, the secret of, well, maybe it's always a small, but personal engagement is actually the secret answer to it all. Yeah. Cause I see, like, I remember like the things that get, uh, cause I would see people uh, uh, being like, Oh, why does my, I have so many followers. Why did none of them translate into 
people clicking on my links for my work. It must be the algorithm. It's more like, no, people, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> go to it for viral posting, not for yeah. whatever game you're making. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a tricky thing. But speaking about games you people make, you've made you made at least multi, you've made multiple games, but one that is uh, relevant to this well actually I would say they're all relevant to the radio show, but one that is especially relevant to the radio show. Let me know, tell me pretend I don't know what this thing is. What is Fliff? Uh can can you describe Fliff? I uh what is it? Well, uh, should, should I describe it? I, I I can embellish it. You can describe it. Okay, so it's a it's a, a physics based uh like kind of a very aerial uh platformer uh collectathon. Uh that's all I got. Well it's it's about uh it's about baby angels. It's, isn't it based on a very old idea you had. It is. Like a kid or something? Yeah. Or like in a dream? I forget which. It started as uh, an idea I had for uh, a mod of uh, the game Marble Blast, uh, which is uh, something I uh, was really into as a kid. Um, very, very active in the Marble Blast modding community. Well, more just like making the custom levels, but uh, some, pe some people got really into like modding the whole game, and I tried my hand at that. Uh, and so that's where Fliff came from. It was originally just a little marble bonking around in some clouds. Marble Blast on Xbox? What is going on here? Was <laughs> so there is a there is an Xbox version. The one I played was uh, on PC. Yes, uh, much much older. No, I'm look I'm looking at this, and it has huge PC game like yeah. early two thousands, late nineties PC game energy that like or that like kid would have. Reminds me of that, uh, has the same vibe as, uh, that Hovercraft game. I don't know if I know that one. I, I don't know what it's, I don't know what it's called, but it, it's like <laughs> when someone got a, I don't think it was actually our computer when I think someone got like a work computer in my house. That was like our first access to a computer, like a work laptop. That was, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what's this? It has a game on it. You can play video games on these things. <laughs> Yeah, the Marble Blast uh, came free with uh, it was like an iMac or something that we had yeah. at the time. Were they were they doing iMacs back then? I don't know. Was uh, it's like an iMac G three or G four or something, whatever that was. I don't know. Um, uh, and so yeah, I was I was just a kid and I was like, oh cool, we have a computer and there's a free game on it. Let me try it. And it kind of just became my life for the next uh, few years. Is it like uh is it like monkey ball? It looks like it, monkey ball. People always say it looks like monkey ball, but it controls very different cuz okay. you know, I guess monkey ball I think usually you're like tilting the the board, right? Yes, uh, yes, yeah, technically speaking that's what you're doing. It's right. more it more it's more like a 3D marble madness. Okay, yes. Monkey ball. A little bit more like marble madness, yeah. All right. I got to the point where I was I had such fine control over the marble that uh, to me, it, it didn't feel like a marble rolling game anymore. It just felt like this is my like third person character controller just walking through the world. Yeah, uh, that... <laughs> which is what I strive to like accomplish now in in games like that. Yeah. When I'm making a physics based game, is I don't I don't want it to feel like you're struggling to roll something along. You know, I want it to feel like you're in control. Yeah, that and that's a difficult thing to do. I've definitely uh, in when I was like spending some time going through my back catalog. I would play games and I was like, why does this have physics in it? It doesn't need it. And like, it would feel like sometimes like it, people just uh, implement it because it's available. And I was like, you could just use math to do this and it would feel a lot better. So it's like a very difficult like thing to, uh, to make a game that like uses physics feel like you are controlling something rather than fighting against forces, which, I don't know. Maybe I am. We are fighting against physics in real life, but our our bodies. We can pilot our bodies all the time. Usually, pretty well through a space. Yeah. Well, you adapt just like I did in Marvel Blast. Yeah. Right. I was trying to uh, tell friend uh, someone about like 
because she was very bad at a bullet hell game. And I was like, there's no way to describe how to be good at it. You just need to become the ship, you know. Yeah. Much like you became the marble. Yeah, totally. We've been adding a lot of, uh, like, usually we'll add a break button in, in a physics-based game. Because uh, we did that in Jessica, and then we did that again in Fliff, and it just it feels right to be able to just stop whenever you want. Just right. So you're not worried about rolling off the edge or whatever. Yeah, just to like you right, know, calm it down for a second. <laughs> be like, hey, what if uh, uh, so you're not sort of like spiraling out of control and kind of recollecting your bearings because it's a video game and you can just do that. Speaking of bullet hells, are, are we going to be asked our favorite Toho? Or are like... you jumping the gun? Do you, are you ready to answer already? <laughs> we don't. We don't have to skip ahead. I just. I just wondered if that was coming. It is coming. It's coming. Oh, <laughs> there. Oh, I don't. I don't have to think about it. I just don't oh, want really? it. Okay. Yeah. No. Wow. I mean, you know what your favorite? Is. I mean, I think. I honestly, I think I have the same favorite as you. Well, no, okay. We have the same thing. Because I don't remember. Well, I mean, the... a friend was telling me about a lot of them. <laughs> Well, I need. I need. Well, now I need to solve the mystery. Do I need to know what your favorite Toho characters are? It's uh, it's Clown Piece, right? Yeah, yeah. Clown Piece is our favorite Toho girl. Now, now I'm doing the thing where I look up who that is. Oh, it's a clown. Uh, <laughs> clown Piece is the she's. So I, I don't. I'm not an expert. A friend told me about the lore. She, she, she's uh, they live on the moon, and she's dressed up. As of the American flag, because everyone on the moon is scared of America. Yeah, I think there's like moon bunnies, and they're they, they're scared of the flag because it's like oh. an alien artifact. Okay, I think I w- I was playing that one, but I couldn't get past I couldn't get past some of the moon bunnies. This is my secondhand knowledge of Toho. Yeah. So I don't know if this is accurate, but um, but I love that as a concept. I think that's I love Toho, but don't know anything about it. Yeah, same. I have elementary knowledge. I played it a few times. I'm not good at bullet hells. Yeah, that is, I think that's the beauty of, you know, uh, I, I talk about this a lot because well, it comes up a lot. The beauty of Toho is it looks cool, you know, it looks, it's got a good yeah. look to it that yeah. draws people in, even if, like, they don't want to play Bullet Hells. They all have, the characters are very distinct and they stand out. Yeah. I love the art style. Toho is deeply fascinating to me because I want every video game to be Toho. Like... I just want every video game to be like not open source, but like open IP. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because they're just like, there's all the fan games and spinoffs and stuff. And it's just like, I want to make a game where people do that with our characters someday. Just like, I want people to put bomb dolls in their own game, like stuff like that. Yeah. That is. I like the like because and it only I think helps Toho that it that that's possible. I don't feel like it harms it in any way. Yeah, that's my feeling on pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah. I just I want to be able to steal everything, and I want everyone to be able to steal our stuff. Yeah, right. Because at that point, I think I think uh, 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 mutu- I think what's the word I'm looking for? I think um, consensual stealing is just called sharing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> consensual stealing is really funny. Yeah, it is just sharing, honestly. But yeah. I don't know. Well, it's like, yeah. So yeah, there is there is like not uh, much to be gained from like locking all your your stuff, up. especially uh, yeah. like w- there isn't that much to be gained, and there's nothing to be lost. No one's being like, oh, this thing is worse now because of this fan game that I don't have to ever play. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exists like the fan games get made anyway i just would rather people can like get paid for those mm-hmm. right right there's like you know there's a lot of that gray area that understood gray area of uh you know around fan art where people can you know mm-hmm. sell things and you know you go to conventions and there's a lot of stickers and uh, charms and stuff of animes that i don't think these authors created i'm pretty sure <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah I'm pretty sure my lo- the local creators at my uh, uh, anime convention did not make Demon Slayer. <laughs> it's not 100% verified, but I'm confident in that fact. But, like, what if it didn't matter, you know? Yeah. yeah. It would be nice. I just think everything should be that way. Yeah. 
Right. I want to steal assets from all our favorite games. I say IP law is stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Indie Apocalypse is very. Uh, when people have asked me about like, okay, I, I want to. I'm into Plunder Core, or I want to use assets from other stuff. I'm like, as long as it's not like, as long as you are like actively, like not just stealing them, you know, and just like not making them your own in any way. I don't really care. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. No one is. Uh, I also have the benefit of I don't think lawyers are gonna come knocking down my doors because I use uh, a game in Indie Apocalypse uses assets like it has Delfino Plaza in it, you know. Yeah. Which is one of those benefits of having you know flying under the radar of things. That kind of stuff is always so much fun, though. Like, there's the, like, Ridge Racer in, like, Half-Life and, like, Mario yeah. and, like, Dark Souls and stuff like that. That stuff's always so much fun. Yeah, there's, like... Uh, Mix there. and match. Mix and match is great. I've never heard the term Plunder Core before, but I it's, feel like I'm probably into that, so... It, it's. I think it's a fairly... Uh, I, it's not even. I don't think it's a widely accepted. Term. I think it's just like a, a new term that somebody said, and I really like the sound of it. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. Uh, 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 recent indie apocalypse commission game by Muchi uh, Businessman. It, I think would be classified as Plunder Core. Uh, Titanic Two, I think, is Plunder Core. Nice. Um, that was one of those fun things of like. Uh, those games that was like was called something different when it was in the apocalypse. It was I think it just went by the subtitle, which was like Orchestra of a Dying Sea. I think was it. What it was. Uh -huh. But yeah, that is like idea of you know, hey, let's just uh, make stuff and borrow Mario and put him in there, but like not just make a platformer and use Mario sprites, but like. The recontextualize Mario, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that is like, at some point, you know, that's transformative art or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I'm determined to make a Plunder Core game now. Yeah. It's just already like laws for like parody and stuff. I remember right. like companies tried suing like Grand Theft Auto a long time ago because they were like parodies of their businesses as like signs and in the game or something and they're like nah it's fair use i think everything should be like that yeah there, i think there, there was that time in like the 60s or the 70s there's a I forget when it was when people like high art people got very into nancy and they were doing like a bunch of stuff with nancy comics yeah and, Aww. and, yeah. and it's so just cute. like you know that is you can just kind of do uh, whatever you want and like you know that's you know there's those weird cases where it, it loops around it becomes like uh like published it's like a, there was that garfield thing uh uh that it, it feels very old internet <laughs> that garfield uh, minus garfield strip that a person made yeah got, uh, ended up getting published and jim davis ended up making his own version his own strips of it that's so cool i didn't know that it's fascinating and that's i think because I think the thing is, like, most artists probably don't care or would probably actually be welcoming to it. It's it's the it's when you get corporations involved that they're like, yeah, yeah. it's all fake. It's like being in trouble is a fake idea. <laughs> You're right. right. There is like very, very rarely. Well, I think like uh, any any artist get upset, but it's like the company that owns their art for some reason doesn't want you to do it. Yeah. And it's like, hey, why does I mean we're we're living the peak culture of you know Marvel of a company that that created nothing, <laughs> and ah. is living off the legacy of much better art of like all these artists that are just like, oh, we own uh, Spider Man and all these and all of his amazing friends that you made <laughs> because uh, yeah, you I made it for this company. <laughs> uh. Fortnite is very funny. I'm just thinking about Fortnite now, and I'm just like, I, I love, I love, I love just playing as all those Marvel characters, and 
Uh, I like, like, I don't even like Marvel, but, like, I just think it's funny to see crossovers. It's ironic to see, like, Wolverine shoot Ariana Grande with an automatic assault <laughs> rifle. It's just, like... Right, it's 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 accidentally. <laughs> it's Fortnite really is accidentally postmodern or something. Yeah, exactly. It's, I'm it's... starting to think it's not an accident. I really, honestly, yeah, think it might not cool. be. It could be kind of intentional, honestly. <laughs> I think they're having fun with it at this point. <laughs> yeah, there's like, what what characters can we put in our thing? Because it makes eighty million bajillion dollars, and yeah. we can do whatever we want. Everybody wants to be involved in Fortnite. Who do you want to be in Fortnite? We want Bomb Yeah, to be we Fortnite. totally want our <laughs> our own characters. Oh, oh no, our yeah, character. I'm fine. I just want him. <laughs> well, if, uh, well, if you wait a long round long enough, I'm sure Epic will buy you. So, yeah, I honestly, well, they just they should go for it. They just introduced the like Fortnite for Unreal thing. I hate Unreal Engine, but I've been thinking about toying with it just because I want to put like clone i want to put clones of our games in fortnite just to put them right. in front of more people's faces so yeah just remake all our games in fortnite yes the the robloxification of fortnite yeah exactly that's honestly kind of exciting yeah i think it's cool. roblox is great i've spent a lot of time playing roblox <laughs> i i my my roblox was uh starcraft use map settings uh -huh. <laughs> that was the same same idea of people creating their own games within a pre-existing game. Yeah. Oh, I used to do StarCraft modding a long time ago. Yeah, that is... I think about that a lot because it's, like, very weird that, like, Dota came from that and, like, Tower Defenses yeah. came from that. Yeah. These sort of, like, you know, the the second most popular game in the world or whatever. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, that stuff's silly. <laughs> is 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 an old is comes from an old StarCraft mod. Yeah. They're not funny. even they're not even mods. They're like they're like uh like full on experiences. They're just right. using the engine. Right. It's right. like or like both of us got our start in games just modding things. Yeah. yeah. It's like I was mostly modding the like build engine games when I was a kid. So it's just like I don't know. Yeah, I just got tired of the limitations of what I was modding, and I was like, I just want to make my own games now. But it's like it's all the same in the end. Yeah, that is that is like the 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 good thing about like uh, tools that feel like uh, uh, tools like level editors are great because they let you just kind of mess around in like a a nice restrained ecosystem that you understand. You know, you can. I wish there was like a good way for a while. I really wanted to make Tony Hawk levels, but there's no good way to just like, I don't think there's a good Tony Hawk that you can just make level editors for. And I wow. wanted to make weird abstract levels in Tony Hawk for some reason. That sounds, that fun. sounds fun. That's cool. We were just talking. About yeah, how... we are. We are like planning on making like a skateboarding game sometime soon. So but Let us know your ideas. <laughs> we were just talking about though, like how hard it would be to get that working. Like the you can do it. Yeah, I'm someday. sure we can figure it out. We'll figure it's it out. The character controller. Yeah, get some skateboard games going someday. But yeah, there's like there's there's a whole bunch of work. There's a there's a time period in time where I am trying to recreate the Mask of the Red Death in Time Splitters Two, and yeah, and all these. Uh, it's like when you they give you colored lighting, and you can. I think that was that game. There was, I feel like there was a game with colored lighting that I could turn on, and I was like, what if I I'm made these? Sure. I'm Splitters 2 had colored lighting, yeah. I remember playing with that level editor, too. Like, what if I That's could awesome. make different rooms be like those rooms in the Mask of the Red Death? And then I was like, no. And then I or got confused. and Or maybe I actually made it. I can't remember. <laughs> they existed in a memory card somewhere, maybe. But... Uh, uh, but none of that aside. Oh, that aside, I made this thing and I don't pay attention to it. <laughs> to this thing, which is to say, the timer. Uh, uh oh, uh, are we? Did we go past the time? We did. But that's going past is a good thing. Going under is the bad thing, which is why the timer exists. The timer exists so that I don't accidentally think that I uh, timed it beforehand. But no, you will, uh, Princess Jessica. Thank you so much for uh, being on the show. We're gonna be back in like two minutes we're we're not going to be gone for long but 
and we'll have uh, more to talk about as we head over to the group segment of the chat. But uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for, you know. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you for making games. Thank you for this whole, whole. Thank you for it all, you know. Love. Thank you for what you do. We love art. Yeah, that's yes, great. Uh, that's the, the, the slogan of Indie Apocalypse is I love art. I love art. I love art. In all its in all its incar incarnations, whether it's uh, pretension or fun, or fun pretension, or you know, bad. Oh, I love bad art. It's yeah, yeah, bad art is good too. It's such a because the secret is that good art and bad art, the connecting tissue is they're all personal art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, humans, we love to see other humans. It's, especially in our art but where is there you are fubar that's why i was i was stalling until i found fubar uh i always i always confuse it i always for some reason i always confuse it and gimp and scribus um not that i confuse it and gimp and i confuse gimp and scribus but no reason why well anyway anyway we're not here to discuss uh, windows icons <laughs> We're here to go on break for roughly two minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Break. Good, goodbye for now. Bye. Enjoy the hot dog. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to Indie Apocalypse Radio. That was, uh, what is it? That was Your Boyfriend Sucks. And the song is, I think, Dayu X3 or Times 3. I can, or Diu. I, I don't know how to pronounce uh, the D Y or D I U. But anyway, I'm getting very into, uh, we're starting to be summertime here in the states, so I'm getting back in the summer summer music, which is I don't know dream pop, in, in dream indie rock or whatever. And then there's Bandcamp. If Bandcamp has me uh, has me anything to believe, uh, East East Southeast Asia uh, makes a lot of that as of late, within like the past ten years, and I'm glad for it. That kind of dream pop, shoegaze, lo-fi, Jason, all that kind of, all the, you know, g genres. Mm -hmm. Speaking of genres, we're here with three guests. I guess humans do not fall into genres, uh, so not speaking of genres at all. But I got to say that everyone else is here at some point or another, instead of just talking by myself forever. Um, welcome back, everyone. Hi. Yay. Yay. Uh what is no i'm i'm looking at this uh this 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 little kid here uh, appetized on about this hot dog um and so important food questions i guess open end kind of like kind of like the uh, do you have a favorite toho character this is a question that may not have an answer but uh do you have a preferred hot dog topic a favorite a favorite hot dog a favorite hot dog topping like a singular oh, I thought one you said or like topic. a sweet <laughs> oh you, well topic. that'll be a follow-up to your favorite hot dog topic can can i make something up right now <laughs> yes you may um hot dog with pat gapow topping Sorry, what <laughs> uh so pat gapow is like uh mr five with holy basil Okay. Mm. It'd be really sour, salty, spicy. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at it right now. That would be a lot to put on top of a hot dog, or maybe you could make it, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could make it like with hot dog, as as like the meat, as a added meat in there. Oh, but but I I think I have seen some people put like um, ground beef on yeah. hot dog, right? <laughs> maybe yeah, who knows it's like it's the hot dogs are the all-purpose uh, uh cheap meat you know yeah yeah that sounds really good you, you get a pack of them for like a few bucks <laughs> never mind that they're like uh three thousand percent sodium and 90 percent fat or whatever <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot for cheap that's the, the it's the the internal beauty of it. It's like the the beauty of the the Arizona tall cans. They're only ninety nine cents. 
you have a favorite hot dog? I'm thinking, I'm thinking like kimchi or something. Oh yeah, yeah, something that sounds good. simple, but also like, uh, uh, contrasting That makes to sense. the hot dog. Yeah. Oh yeah, like acid, 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 salty hot dog. Mm -hmm. Oh, kimchi hot dog sounds really good. I don't know if I have a favorite, uh, but that sounds awesome. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now I'm we got trying now. to think of what good hot dogs I've had with things on them, but. I mean, the basic, the ba like Sonic's favorite is like chili. Oh, yeah, Chili I do like dog. a chili dog. Chili dogs are good. I'm a Chicago trader. I will get hot dogs with, like, ketchup and mustard Yeah, on them. that's true. <laughs> that's well. Luckily, this is a. a... A Chicago safe zone when Chicago is not allowed in here to tell you what to do with your hot dog. Yeah. I was literally, literally, I was just thinking, I was like, oh, sauerkraut. And I'm like, sauerkraut's just kimchi, but not spicy. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So <laughs> well, that's also it's an thing. all It's all the same vibe. yeah, it's a, I get very, uh, uh, I'm uh, fixated on, I wish I lived closer to an Ikea because there's something about, There's some platonic beauty about an Ikea hot dog that I can't describe. I don't know what it I don't is. think I've ever had an Ikea hot dog. Yeah, me neither. There's something to them. They're like a dollar. And there's it's the right kind of like... I think... Ikea has a Lindenberry jam, and that would also go good on a hot dog, Yeah, I think. that would. Like a sweet and salty kind of thing. I think, I think the beauty is there. Like It's one of those... You can just kind of put anything on it. Yeah, yeah, it's like pizza. I mean, I I've eaten a hot dog from like this weird place that had like Fruit Loops on it. Right. Why so like <laughs> Anything? I was in like Cleveland or something. It's like a Fruit Loop hot dog. Maybe that's their thing there. It's, it really, it's just whatever will distract you from the the tube of miscellaneous meat that you have in front of you. Do not uh, make you think, oh, yes, uh, uh, what do they put in here? Never you ask. I love the idea that Fruit Loops is like a Cleveland style hot dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it could be i listen i'm not a cleveland expert i've never never been perhaps passed through once i don't remember uh but it could be i don't know what a cleveland what's really on a cleveland style hot dog let me ask the internet i don't see any hot dogs i see like french fries this looks like someone put uh uh what's that thing poutine on a hot dog Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. I should huh was that was that bimbo did i see bimbo Mm. Bimbo? bimbo Like the the little bread? bear on the on the bread Oh, yeah, Bimbo. bimbo bear? <laughs> I don't know what yes that is. yes bimbo the little bear on the bread we know what we're talking about I don't know what that I think there's is. like a like a bimbo like factory or something around here or I drove by once. Uh, oh yeah, Bimbo. I forgot it's a bear. it's a bear Yeah, oh yeah. that's creepy He's a yeah jaunty little bear. He's like, "Hey, what's up?" I like him I don't <laughs> He's like, "Oh, that's not that is a creep. I don't like that bimbo." I, I was I was thinking of the the fun bimbo. Are you looking at the one that's like leaning over the I love fun bimbos I'm a fun bimbo <laughs> Are you thinking of the one that's like leaning over the 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 title? His own name. Oh, oh, I see that one now. Yeah, that's pretty cute. In my mind, there was one that's kind of like waving. Maybe I'm thinking of a different bear. Might God, be. are there multiple bear mascots? I just searched bimbo bread, so that's all I'm seeing. That's what I searched too. Anyway, we we like any good podcast. There is plenty of. Uh, let's just look on Google and. See what we can find, but fortunately, unlike some podcasts, are are this one isn't the whole purpose of it is not just to read a Wikipedia page back to you, uh, with mild editorializing. Like, uh, then I would have to classify this as an informational podcast. Mm. Yeah. Well, But enough about bimbos. enough about bimbos. This is a. Uh,
uh, video games, though, huh? What are those things? I barely, we barely, I guess we mentioned Marvel Boss, but I haven't realized this is a video game podcast. We barely even talk about <laughs> video, video, video <laughs> games. What oh, do you no. Video, what do you think about video games? What do you, what do you, they sound cool? Little guys running around <laughs> seems neat. I love when a little guy runs around. That's like, that's the ideal video game experience. I think somebody uh, submitted a game to the most recent indie apocalypse, and they they called it like a they, that was like their genre. It was like a little guy running around or something. <laughs> a little that's guy fun. adventure. Cute. Oh, that's cute. But you know, a little guy adventure with a, but also a tag female protagonist because a little guy is a uh, <laughs> within yeah. video games is a gender neutral term for people who run around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would say all our games are about a little guy. Mm-hmm. They are, yeah, they are. Love like the the beautiful tradition of games is little guys when you think of, when you really break it down. And uh, what a beautiful uh, tradition it is. It's all about the, the, like, how can I, look, the fun little guy on the screen is moving around when I press buttons. That is kind of the main appeal of a video game to me is just, like, moving around and and being a little guy moving around. Yeah, because I was thinking... Uh... As I'm as I'm 2023, 20, I've been like full movie mode, um, and I was thinking about people would be like, "Oh, this game is so cinematic," or like a movie, and I'm like, "I've, I've, I don't think I don't think I've ever played a game that's actually like a movie, and like games can't really capitalize on the strength of what movies are, and like." Because uh, a lot of it is like when I when I would see people like I was watching movies just today and, you know, characters are shot from like super far away or obscured by netting or in reflections or and, like there's a lot of uh, not looking at the uh, the actors and games games wouldn't dare. Or at least games that, uh, you know, position themselves as being cinematic. I guess it just means they're serious. I don't know. Photorealistic or like right. Nice lighting. I don't know. Yeah, like I don't know what. Uh, like I, I feel like they don't really uh, capture what the essence of uh, cinema is and what what's good about it. I think if a game fully captured cinema, it would just be a movie, and right. we already have movies. Right, we already have Night Trap. <laughs> what do we need? You don't need you don't need to reinvent movies. We already did those. Yeah, we we, we they're doing it right now. When it's called TV, it's called six hour long TV. <laughs> I never remember where I first saw the idea, but I've always been a proponent of video games being more like stage plays than movies. Yes, because just the way they have like an agreement with the audience to not look too hard at the seams yeah i was i just saw i went to a musical just last week and i was thinking wow like there is the the, like this the the beauty of like people adjusting the set like as part of the performance and how it all kind of like blends together and and you had like you said you have that suspension of like the agreement of yes this is part of the play but i'm not gonna go that actor is moving that table around the reason the reason why they have to like change the sets on the stage is because if the actors went too far away from the center of the stage there would be floating point precision errors yeah <laughs> there would be there, there's you they can't go outside the bounds of the stage they didn't model that stuff you know, it's, if you if you turn i mean when you think about it it is also the same way if you turn a if you turned a, like a the stage background around it's just wood <laughs> they didn't model the back cuz nobody has to see it yeah, yeah, it's just called. It's just just boards of wood. 
but there is yeah there's uh i think you know a lot of movies are sometimes like uh uh you know stage derivative too where it's like i love to watch was watching something yesterday and i was like yeah this is this is just 40 minutes of people in a room arguing with each other like true cinema of just <laughs> Uh, I love to see it. Like no, no jet setting CG trips. It's just the people acting in a room. I love to see acting. I do really love that. That is, yeah, that's one of the main appeals for me for movies. When you can just let actors act, that's what they're there for. That's what they love to do. I do really that's like that. Sorry, what was that? Oh, uh, uh, I said that that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a movie can survive with bad acting. Yeah. Unless it's like, like um, so bad that it is so good. Yes, but then there's still like, there's still passion in that bad acting that, that shines through. And that's true, that's true. That, that's what makes it enjoyable. It's like someone giving their all. Uh, and that is uh, the beauty of bad art is like the human element yeah when you when you strip out the human element is when you lose i think uh, the value in the art yeah, yeah totally. I, I was thinking like um a movie with like bad acting but like because they spend so much on so much on like their CGI and they <laughs> forgot to invest on their like acting stuff. Yes, I think that's kind of sad. Yeah, yeah, it's like oh, this looks uh, really good, but I don't remember what any of the people are doing or th what any of the reasons they're there for. They're just kind of like it's like a kid and you're playing around with action figures. <laughs> it's like uh, an afterthought for your story or something. It's a weird uh, thing. But there, mm -hmm. I want more humans in games, like, like not just making games, but like I just want to put more people. In oh games. yeah, we should make an FMV like I want to like do FMV stuff and like scan people's bodies and stuff like. Yeah, there's oh, I I I dream of a day when a couple of people have like uh, submitted. FMV stuff before, but there's That's like, cool. there's there's something around the edges where it just like did not work for me in some ways, you know. It's just like, ah, oh, this is fine. It has the real uh, uh, student film, but not like uh, not but like high school student film vibe of like you see uh, when when you're young and you realize that anyone can make movies, and there's mm -hmm. there's that excitement. But the excitement isn't matched with uh, craft. Yeah. But you can see, like, oh man, I wish this person would keep making movies. Yeah, we should make FMV stuff. I made a bunch of movies in high school. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like, especially now, it's never been easier for anyone to make movies. Yeah. We, yeah. we pretty much all own little movie makers. I want to make movies. And we can all make I am it. technically working on like a project that involves FMV stuff with someone, but that's uh, a little bit of a secret right now. Oh, even I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or I forgot. I told you about it, but <laughs> out deep, secrets. Deep secrets here. I haven't that. gotten the fmv stuff yet like we're still i was still learning oh, okay. how to like uh like put videos in oh video. i remember now yeah oh yeah, yeah that secret <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did i did i've done mild uh fmv stuff in game maker and it is weird to like i don't know how it works in unity but just like in my mind it's like oh it'd be very easy you're just telling it to play a video and then when the video ends but it was more complicated than that yeah, it was more complicated than I expected to get videos working. Yeah, it's not that bad. I've been working on a commission that has some video element to it, but it's like, 
it took a while to figure it out, but that's not so bad. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Once once you figure out like, uh, like how it wants you to time things and like end and start videos, at least you know, working in Game Maker. It, obviously, the two things are different, but there is like easier it becomes easier to use but you would think oh it's just super easy it's like it's like putting a graphic in right do you have a uh an affection for fmv games at all uh i like mist uh <laughs> oh, yeah you love mist. i love mist i i can't think of anything else off the top of my head do you have any any uh, uh admiration for pissed Oh, pissed! I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I actually that inspires me a lot. Uh, I haven't like checked it out in a while, but I, I saw it as a kid. As a uh, kid, I bought uh, I bought Riven for the yeah. PlayStation because it had five discs, and that was fascinating to me. Yeah, I had five discs on on like a, the I think it was the same iMac I was playing Marvel Lost on. And, but like as as a child, I didn't understand what Mist was, and I was like, I don't get this game. I don't know how to play it. <laughs> it's very mysterious. Yeah, yeah. There is like. I call that. I I think there's a good games are, are a weird thing because in terms of like a. Uh, uh, difficulty because they have that initial difficulty level of like playing the game that other mediums don't have necessarily and then there's like the second uh, layer of difficulty that you know all other art also has where it's like difficulty of ingesting what the text is trying to tell you yeah yeah I definitely was not uh, fully like following the story of Mist as a kid <laughs> Now that is that is me with like a lot of uh, stories. When I was a kid, I didn't get probably most of them. I did, yeah, I felt the same way. I did not understand the nuance of Cloud Strife. He was the guy with the big sword, <laughs> and he was sad. Yeah, I, guess. I, I think that um, I also replay a lot of games that I played when I was very really young because, like back then, I cannot really read English and. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's a whole. It's an extra layer of confusion there. <laughs> yeah, I I remember playing um, SM, SMT three Nocturne. Yeah, and I was so confusing. Like um, I I was so confused because like first um, it is a game that you have to basically talk to your enemy in a battle to recruit yeah. them. Or, like to you have to talk to people just to like get what you have to do next. And I was like. Uh, okay, I, I will have like this dictionary next to me and I will try to like translate everything and it takes me like 10 minutes just to <laughs> translate one text. <laughs> yeah, right. And, that, and then, then the game is not actually straightforward past that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I think like, um, like I want to revisit most of the game that I played when I was um, very young, <laughs> especially like uh, Final Fantasy Nine. Yeah. Like I, I heard that it has like a lot of story about like death, about like um existential crisis and stuff. And yeah, I want to re re revisit that because um back then I was like, oh yeah, like Weeby Weeby is cute, and that's all I know about. Yeah, right. I I wonder how much. Uh, sometimes I think like. Uh, is video game stories are bad like that 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 bad rap a mixture of bad translation of like you know early rush translations to English and also most people who were saying that having grown up with them as children and <laughs> being like no these were uh, adults still wrote those stories and uh, the advent of video games and not uh, people still people have been telling stories for I don't know I don't. People have been telling human beings have been telling each other stories for a very long time, it's, and uh, different mediums don't inherently mean that like we have to reinvent what stories are. Maybe like the delivery method is different, but there's still kind of a. Uh, I think people don't. Maybe maybe programmers are bad at telling stories, but I don't think that's true. 
I think there's, I think, you know, I, I remember when I played Final Fantasy VI uh, more recently, and I realized, like, Kefka has intense middle manager energy. And being like, oh, right, he's this, <laughs> instead of just, like, uh, this omnipotent evil clown, he's kind of like an assistant manager at a store who really wants to be the boss. <laughs> He's a real jerk about it all, and um, but yeah, video uh, games and stories, yeah. I like them, and I, th you know, people are still making like great ones like every day, and that's kind of like what this whole thing is about is that there's like no shortage of good games being made like every day, and I hope more people can go out there and check them out. Like, so. uh, especially you know uh, different experiences all over the place different people different uh, I'm, as, as, like, as I'm going into my recaps next week as I do my yearly or my monthly recaps to be like hey all the old issues are not old they're actually just past issues and they're all still good and I, I used to have like a little preamble for each day and I kind of want to go back to doing that I want to be like hey what if there was a thing that uh, featured diverse creators from all over the world and they were paid for their games and uh, it was very easy to access and uh, it, it created it not only highlighted and paid these creators and what if that thing existed for three years and already exists? <laughs> I'm like, it's a... I, I think sometimes that like if I was... A different person if I was uh, uh, imagining your brain some indie or you're not even indie someone in the game industry that you know if you imagine that person I was not me but I was that person would you be like ah this is the coolest thing that's ever existed something I think about uh, uh, from time to time but anyway uh What was I saying? I had no uh, particular thought there. I was just uh, thinking <laughs> in advance and <laughs> kind of like, uh, this is why I say I have don't have the uh, full confidence in my hosting strength. Because <laughs> it's more like I just talk to people and I'm not an interviewer. I oh, think nice you're doing great. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm fine at talking to people, I think. <laughs> but like, not getting into the like, the the. Uh... Also, I I feel like no one wants to come on. I, sh I feel like it's more relaxing to come on a show, and I have to be like, uh, what are your inspirations? What are your, what motivates you to make games? What's your yeah? This is, this is so much less stressful than like if it was just any other interview. Right, right. You don't need to be like, what are your key influences in gaming that are not video games? Uh, what are, what mm -hmm. drives you to, what's the, what's the future? What do you, what is your future you see for video games? What is the Citizen Kane of video games? Fortnite. Fortnite is, yes. When is Orson Welles going to be in Fortnite? <laughs> That would be so sick. That would be great, actually. <laughs> uh, it's such a shame that all the Fortnite characters are mute. Like, oh uh, yeah. Can you imagine if they had like voice lines too, like Overwatch? When is Orson Welles gonna be in Overwatch? I uh, know Orson Welles. It's F for Fortnite, obviously. <laughs> it's and they use they use that cut. Why, why did I type F for Fortnite? Like that's the thing that's gonna actually show up. <laughs> It's that same F for fake poster, but he's like, it's, they, they just, Epic just posted that one day, but in Fortnite. Yeah. And you can drink a lot of wine. Is his, That's his emote that he comes with. And really hating, uh, uh, what's that guy? The guy that sucks. <laughs> well, he, I think he hates a lot of guys that suck, but like uh, the guy who has who sucks, who also has a son who sucks. 
That's, that doesn't really no narrow that. down guys That's who suck guys. very much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he did the Twilight Zone movie. Uh, I, I honestly have no idea. Uh, Matt, no, not Max Landis, John Landis. John Landis, that's a guy who sucks. Mm-hmm. There was, I always think about that quote where he's like, Do you have access to John Landis? And the interviewer's like, Yeah, what do you want me to do? He's like, Kill him. <laughs> yeah. He sounded like he had the gall to tell me how to run my movie after uh, two people had died on the set of his movie. Wow. Also, yeah, he's a he's a real caddy. I like the cattiness of Orson Welles a lot. <laughs> I think it you need a little more. You need, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit. Is that sometimes uh, uh, the toxicity of positivity? You know, as I said. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how you know also it tends to mostly. Uh... Anyway, anyway, now we're just now I'm just thinking about Orson Welles and Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> if Orson Welles could hit the gritty. <laughs> what if... Feel silly that I keep uh, talking about Fortnite. I feel like I'm, I've been like hyping up Fortnite a lot, and I'm just like I'm waiting for them to do. I mean, I know they've done problematic things in the past, but I'm like I feel like there's going to be a moment where I deeply regret how into Fortnite. I there's am. Gex in Fortnite now. So yeah, uh, as long as a hundred Gex are in Fortnite. Oh, I, I got very excited, then got ultra disappointed. I thought you said they were Gex. I thought you said Gex was in Fortnite. Oh, yeah. We want that. that we would want, be great too. We want, they have Lara Croft, right? I want Gex. I, I want, do. Uh, like we need the full suite. We need uh we need like a squad of like Lara Croft, Gex, and like Rosie Allen Kane. Yeah. But Idos. Yeah. Idos. Exactly. Yes, I want. Yes, I. We are. We are. We are due for a Raziel resurgence. Yeah. I thought about honestly. Play. They're right in Fortnite. That'd be great. I thought about playing that first. I thought about getting into um, Legacy of Cain very recently. Uh huh. <laughs> having never played any of them. Oh, I love those games. They're yeah. terrible. But terrible video games, though. You gotta love them sometimes. Like Soul, the 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 PlayStation One Soul Reaver game is genuinely a good game. The other like three games in the series are all awful, but in a very heartfelt, loving way, and I love them for that. Ah, uh, that kind of like that pre sort of uh, Devil May Cry uh, mm-hmm. character action game before things like I do actually love an idea of like things feeling less codified. Because it feels like even like in like a lot of like uh, the indie space, things feel very kind of this is how you should make video games kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you can do whatever you want. Get. I like breaking the rules, even if it makes a bad game. Well, we break that a lot because like uh, before I started working with you, your knowledge of video games, like, ended very early. Oh, yeah, I hadn't played, uh, like, a lot of recent games. Uh, I feel like the most recent game I played was probably, like, something on the Wii. Yeah, uh, I had to teach you what iframes were. Yeah, I didn't know what an iframe was. I didn't know anything about... I, I was... I had made so many video games, and I knew nothing about video games. That's, uh, a perspective, I think. I remember (laughs) when I did the, uh, the uh, the the Koosh issue and the person was like, a lot of these artists don't play video games at all. I'm like, perfect. That's what I want. Uh, like half of half of a creative team having zero experience with video games sounds like a perfect formula for video games. It's like learning about more games. I think has definitely opened me up to more ideas. Like yeah. everything you've talked about games, but but at the same time, I find myself having to like push against what I'm learning and remember yeah. that I can make my own choices and do weird stuff. Yeah. There's uh, uh, I, cause I think there's like, there's more lasting uh, impact of something that is, feels more distinct, even if there's like a clunkiness around it. Yeah. Cause that's, that's what we want from games. It's just like a unique experience. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, you want, something it all comes back to the human touch you know yeah games games can be co- can be conversations within their gameplay as well you know it's not just the stories and the words the characters say 
Yeah. A lot of like developers have like very distinct feels to like how their games operate. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's like we were saying about the break button. It's like mm-hmm. we have a we have a vibe that we want to avoid of like a game being needlessly frustrating or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and that is, that is definitely, like, a very, like, coming to expect something like that from your games. Like, you just press a button, like, and it's like, hey, let's just chill out for a second, you know? And, yeah. Like, is and I think it, that does say something about, like, what we want to put into games. Right. Because games are also, like, a, a, a fascinating thing because there's, like, you have that unknown... Uh, you know, second actor of the player that interacts in a way that they don't really exist in any other art form in the way they interact with it because they're such an active participant. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I love not knowing what's going to happen when someone picks up a game. Right. And like, not knowing what, like, because you have however many like preconceived notions that you bring to making a game, but who knows what people bring to the games, like what they've played. Yeah. I've been looking at, I'm, oh. just, I'm, I'm just clicking around pictures of Raziel. <laughs> Such a cool, I don't know, vampire. He's very, very of an era, you know? It's really great. Yeah. But I just also did a thing that I thought was very cool that they, uh, or maybe it was Crystal Dynamics or the both of them, where they would put demo, they they would sometimes put demos of other games on their games. I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the end of that thought. I think it's neat to have demos on, like for other games within your game itself. I love that. They could get away with that because Soul Reaver and like Gex are on the same engine. Yeah. So it's like it's not hard. It doesn't take up much more space to throw a demo on your disc because it's like mostly the same code. Yeah, I I think I think my only um, experience with Soul Reaver is the the version the demo that comes on the Gex 3 disc. Mm. Which is also like, also has also, okay, anyway, 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 the show's been, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going into, uh, just rambling into, uh, Gex territory, which is not my territory. This is <laughs> Gex territory as well, as well as claim territory. Uh, I will not infringe. But um, also, the show's been going for a little while, and this show yeah, doesn't. Yeah, like, like hours. We're, uh, we're 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 cresting. Yeah, it's been live for two, uh, recording for like an hour and a half, or hour forty. Uh, but I gotta. I try to keep this show at a reasonable length, and because I could uh, just talk forever. But. Nobody wants to hear someone talk forever, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm giving myself the wrap up uh, signal. <laughs> um, so I wanna, first of all, I wanna thank you all for being here a lot, uh, Princess Jessica Nata. Thank you all for being here, and I get to the most important part of uh, any radio show, really, which is where you plug your stuff and tell me where I can tell people where they can find it. So I, princess Jessica, I assume you may have individual plugs, joint plugs, whatever. Where can people find your stuff? Uh, well, the main thing is girlsoftware.com. Love to see, Uh, love to see someone own their own website. Oh yeah. (laughs) Nothing better. Yeah. And we have a Twitch. I mean, a a itch too. I have some Twitch instead of itch. Uh, we do have a Twitch also, I think, somewhere. Uh, don't know what the name of that one is. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Girl um, Software yeah. uh, underscore HQ. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one, yeah. 
uh but yeah the website has links to like all our stuff uh my website it might not have links to twitter but twitter is yeah twitter is just girl software yeah we're we're, at girl software i think it's girl soft one of the two one of them's already taken but it hasn't been used in a million years so you'll know that one's not us oh yes like 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 at indie apocalypse (laughs) yeah (laughs) you have girl software okay yeah okay so yeah yeah we're easy to find on twitter and stuff yeah Perfect. Uh, uh, so check it out. Check out those games. Uh, in in Nary, I, whether whether you choose to or not, in less than six days, uh, Fliff will be free from Indie Apocalypse. <laughs> it can spread uh, it spread its tiny baby angel wings. Uh, in, oh yay! And do whatever it wants. Because uh, I am I am not now not really particular about like <laughs> exclusivity. You know. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, maybe we should do a, a release for it yeah. sometime. I already have ideas for a sequel to it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah, I something I've, I keep forgetting to do because uh, a, a couple, uh, Sylvie did it, and I think maybe a couple other people have made like their own pages for the games beforehand of saying it's not available yet, but get it, get it in Indie Apocalypse. And I think uh, that's good for like... Yeah, that would have been smart. Yes, it's good. It's, it's it's the multi-pronged thing of you already have the store page made. Uh, it draws people to the zine, but also I think it just gets people excited for it, even if they don't want to buy the zine. They'd be like, oh, in a month I get to play a game from a developer I like. That yeah. kind of pre-release hype. Oh, we totally should have done that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, whoops. Yeah, that is, <laughs> I, I forgot about it. That is like not one of those things I'm used to saying, hey, you should do this. I think it's good advice. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, it it was a very good idea. (laughs) I'm trying to remember to say it more often. Uh, Just put a footnote in the documentation. Yes. Yeah. Be like, hey, uh, make a a little page for it so that people can get excited for the thing. And uh, whatever it is, and get like a, a thing going. But anyway, enough of plugs are not meant to go on forever. Uh, Nico, Sorry. what are you, what are your plug? Where can people find your stuff if they're looking for it? Uh, okay, so I am Natasha Zipa on uh, Ishio and Twitter.com until there is no Twitter.com anymore. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, there is. Like for all for all the issues with Twitter.com, uh, it is a good thing for just being a loud platform for everybody around the world to like yell at each other positively. The bad part is they when they do it negatively. Yeah. But uh, it is definitely like I find I get it's a lot of it's it's how I contacted you, you know. <laughs> yes. Like, like how how would I have found your stuff and how would I have contacted you were it not for Twitter, you know. That's true. That's true. So I think it I think it has it has some good and some bad. Um, but glad something like it exists, you know, even if like, um, I think a lot of people, uh, use it too much. You just should use it as a, as a public board where you check in on it every now and then and don't use it to like yell at 14 year olds for <laughs> having stupid takes. Let them be 14-year-olds. Listen, I was 14 once. I said a lot of dumb stuff. Could you imagine if I said it online and a bunch of 30-year-olds were yelling at me for it? What a world. (laughs) Speaking of uh, stuff uh, I say online, I think you should buy uh, and Apocalypse. I think it's good if you buy uh, 37, 38. That's how you get money to these people here outside of just, you know, like buying their stuff independently, which also works just as well. It's meant to be a... Uh, Indie Apocalypse is not meant to be a, an end point. It's meant to be a starting point for a bunch of developers. Use it to be like, hey, look, I like these developers' games. Let me check out... Uh, you buy it for one dev, you check out the other nine. And sometimes you'll find a new favorite. There is like... Sometimes I think you can have to sort of 
force yourself to be like, oh, I want to try something new, but also like not a, a thing that is everyone is talking about. And sometimes you can be like, oh, why do I want to do this thing? Is it, why I'd rather watch uh, the show I can talk to my friends about. But sometimes if, if you're doing like, ah, oh, art, I love it. I experienced true bliss. And then you can be that first person to talk about a thing with somebody. It never hurts to be like the first person to talk about a thing with a friend group, to be that person who introduces it. It's like... Someone's got to be the first. Yes, yes. Like my first friend, I was thinking a lot about uh, when we were in high school and we all watched like a, a friend group slowly, one by one, all watched Master of the Flying Guillotine, like this old 70s martial arts movie because one person was seen on on demand and it had changed their changed their world and it was like you guys all have to see this and you know what uh i think that can be the same for like you can do that with games too you can play any one of these games and be like wow this game y'all got to see this game and the beauty of games in the apocalypse is they're usually short enough to like Hey, come on, let's all play a game together. And it doesn't take very long. Or come over to my house, we'll play a game real quick, and then we'll do other stuff. It's like, some of them are like three minutes long or something. They're short, they're quick. They're quick bites. Can I say quick bites? Is that a thing? Uh, <laughs> it sounds clever. I should shorten it. It would probably be, I bet if I shorten quick bites, it's something snappier, you know. I bet it would really take off. Uh, who knows? I don't have the, the, the VC. How do you get VC money? Where's a VC? Do I, do I know any venture capitalists just give me a lot of money and not expect any in return? Where do you find those people? Do you have to know somebody? But anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, look at that. Someone made a little a little mouse, Ashley. Yeah. Oh, I love Ashley. Oh, oh, that that is um M. Um, that is Lottie, the the guy who did the ad for my game. <laughs> oh no, I was saying uh, uh, on Twitter, someone made a little mouse of Ashley. Are we? Oh, uh, it... <laughs> I thought you talk about like um the the chat on on Twitch. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I usually don't look at that very often, but I like. I know video games are saved because Ashley still does a little fist pump in Resident Evil 4 when you shoot a guy good. <laughs> that is, I'm like, yes, video games, they're still good. Uh, I was <laughs> worried about that for a second. <laughs> but, uh, anyhow, I, I, so, so I don't uh, spend, um, like, the next uh, 30 minutes talking about the importance of the fact that in Resident Evil 4, when you shoot a guy, Ashley does a little fist pump, and how that is a more meaningful choice than exists in 90% of AAA video games. We're going to close down this show. Uh, you can buy IndiePocalypse at IndiePocalypse.com. You can join it by going to IndiePocalypse.com slash submit, or rather you can submit your games. It's not. I still have to play them and say I like them, but that's the, that's the important first step to that process. Uh, if you uh, want to be commissioned for a game for Indie Apocalypse, I don't know. Just keep making games. That's it, and wait for an, wait for a random email or DM one day from a guy. It's like, what if I gave you some money to make games? <laughs> and you might go, "What a novel concept! <laughs> money for video games? Unlikely. I don't believe you." I'm like, it's true. I'm not a scam artist. I've been doing this for three years. You know I'm good for it. <laughs> uh, uh, Patreon. Uh, did I say that? It's got a Patreon too. If you want to just, if you want to just get commission games because you're a real uh, deal seeking gamer and you're like, oh, I just want to get the new stuff. Uh, you can do that on Patreon too for like for the for the cost of less than a single triple A video game. You can get twelve brand new games that are uh, exciting new games from like Lawson. It's like the it's like the present, the past, present, and future of game development exists within this thing, you know? 
I try not to get uh, too overly confident about it sometimes, but I think it's uh, there's a lot. Of, it's very cool, you know. There's a lot of really good games in here, and I'm like, people gotta play them. People gotta play them. But anyhow, um, this is the thing that I did when I was uh, starting to talk too much, and I'm looking at the store page that someone made for the next issue. I'm like, I love video games. <laughs> I, love, I love video games. I do. I wish I could uh, find better ways to, like, I do wish there were better ways to support, like, you know developers who were making games that were like don't have quote unquote uh, commercial appeal because I, I want I want developers to be able to make a game without having to put roguelike elements in it you know <laughs> or uh, but who knows uh, a slot machine just won a BAFTA best game design award so who knows what video games are nowadays Wow. But uh, it, it's very cool pixel art in a slot machine, though. <laughs> uh, oh, video games. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. Apologies to being mean to, to the vampire game. It's If you like numbers going up and you don't want uh, whatever, whatever. It's good. It's it's a great game for if you want to spend three hours and go. Wow, I feel like I got nothing out of that. <laughs> but time did pass. That that's a whole other genre of video game. That are uh, games used to pass time. Sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, the, the, it feels it feels a specific niche. You know, it's like junk TV. Yeah. Real empty cal em video game empty calories. But Just watching one video. I YouTube. But we're not usually giving uh, awards to Survivor, you know? <laughs> Anyhow. Or uh, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm out of touch with reality television. I barely watch television. I, I got into a thing of watching one episode of a TV show a day as I eat, and it's like, huh. Feels good not to binge. It's a, it's a lifestyle choice. But it's it's one that I enjoy. Sounds but anyway, nice. closing out the show. Yay, Nita, Jessica, Princess. Thank you all for being here. Love to have people on the show. Love to do the show. Love to have all these games exist, um, and that you make them. And I hope that you keep making games. And I wish for all future success. You know. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. Uh, I, I do this because I like games. Uh, as my uh, as the IRS will tell me, I do not do this to make money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.